right, how's it going, everybody? I am once again in front of the camera because we have some Halloween Horror Nights construction updates. Scare Zone Progress is well underway. We have our first sign of props and construction regarding some of the Scare Zones, trusses, lighting, all that stuff. New merch in the park for Halloween Horror Nights. And it's been a while since I've been to Universal, talked about stuff going on at the parks, new stuff. So we have a lot to break down. Let's waste no more time, hop right in there and get things started. All right, and the first update we have here regards the Universal Arches. Over here was a Despicable Me for Medallion. Now we have one for the Paris Olympics starting very, very soon. We don't have a Halloween Hornets one quite yet. It's still pretty early for that. Um, and of course, the Olympics are a big deal for Universal, NBC, Peacock, and all that stuff. But our first little update is regarding these trusses out here. These uh, have just gotten lighting rigs on them. These are going to project something on the arches for Halloween Horror Nights, of course. So I'm guessing they're gonna do some projection work on the ground and up on the arches. Maybe we'll see Otis come to the arches. Maybe we'll see that uh, be our sort of projection package for this year. But very soon, we'll see these arches decorated with posters, medallions, and these little uh, trusses here. These lights are going to light the way for Horror Nights to come. All right, we're in the park. Before we get to any updates, I did not forget, there actually have been some scare zones and live entertainment announced for Halloween Horror Nights 33 that I haven't talked about yet. So we're gonna cut over to Voice Over Me so we can talk about some of this new additions, the new scare zones, new live entertainment for this year's event. So the first scare zone we got announced was called Torture Fair. And the description reads, come one, come all to the Renaissance Fair. Brave the gloriously gory medieval torture devices till you're put out of your misery. Really excited for this one. Excited to see that medieval theming come back, bringing back that sort of old school feel as described by this tweet right here. So curious to see the old meeting the new. This does seem like a very old Halloween Horror Nights type of scare zone, very heavy on the gore. Lots of interesting torture devices. I can't believe I'm saying that in a video. They could put in this scare zone. I think this is gonna be one of those scare zones that you do have a lot of things to stop and look at. You're kind of exploring this renaissance fair as all of these torturous acts are going on. And one more thing I do want to mention about torture fair is the headshot of this character behind the logo. I know some people are seeing the orange hair and are jumping to Jack the Clown. I don't think Jack is going to make an appearance in this scare zone. I think this is maybe a new character, a new lowercase i icon that we could be seeing in this scare zone, ushering in the terrors of the torture fair. The next scare zone we got announced was Swamp of the Undead. And the description reads, in backwaters Louisiana, you're about to be swamped by zombies born from the bodies of trespassers killed and dumped in a nearby bog. Really awesome to see we're going back to Louisiana for this scare zone. Of course, 10 years ago, we got Bayou of Blood, which brought this idea forward with a really cool scare zone featuring the Voodoo Queen. I don't think we're going to see the Voodoo Queen return in this scare zone. I feel like they would have specified that in the description. So I think they're trying their own take of the Louisiana Swamp with this new scare zone. You know, I'm not normally one for zombies, but I am pretty interested to see how they're going to fit into this setting. But both of these scare zones sound absolutely absolutely excellent and I can't wait to see them come to life. We also got the announcement for our one and I'm guessing only live show featured at Halloween Horror Nights this year. It is the return of Nightmare Fuel with Nightmare Fuel Nocturnal Circus. The description reads, step right up to a dark circus, a new nightmare that carries with it a sinister curse. It's a thrilling spectacle of pyro and aerialists. So Nightmare Fuel is back. It has kind of become a mainstay at Halloween Horror Nights in recent years. I really enjoyed Nightmare Fuel Revenge Dream last year. It's a great show. It's not a show I found myself viewing a whole bunch of times, but it is a fun show to bring that spectacle to Halloween Horror Nights. And I know it's a show with a lot of fans. I know a lot of you you all really love Nightmare Fuel, but I'm really curious to see where they go this year with the circus theme. I feel like this would have fit in a little better last year with Dr. Oddfellow and his Carnival of Oddities, but we are getting the return of the circus at Halloween Horror Nights. I'm a sucker for circus themed things at the event, but I'm actually pretty curious to see what happens with Nightmare Fuel this year, and I will definitely be checking it out when I go to the event. All right, our first stop here today takes us down the streets of Hollywood Boulevard, where we have some initial scare zone updates. Not a whole lot here. I'm not expecting a whole lot to happen in Hollywood because of the mega movie parade cutting through this area, as well as New York and the main sort of entrance area. We're just sort of seeing some lighting, initial trusses, uh, just some basic work that's happening here. Some uh, wires up to the lightings, lots of lights. Wanted to come here first to check out on the construction and there is a little bit of an update. 
And because this is an HHN update, what would that be without HHN merch? There's quite a bit of merchandise available here in the five and dimes. So let's hop in there. Right now, the marquee merchandise is Insidious themed, and they have this Insidious the Further shirt. I really love this. I like this a lot better than the key art. This shirt here, like most of the other shirts on sale this year, is $33. They also have a candle for Insidious the Further really interesting smell it's very clean smelling almost very soapy this here is on sale for 23 and with it being halloween horror nights and the red faced demon insidious they have your red devil horns here these are pretty customary light up devil horns for horror nights really fun to wear around they still have the quiet place house shirt here for 33 dollars as well as the heat reactive mug here for 20. they have some ghostbusters frozen empire merch available here including the very cool house t-shirt with the universal studios arches they're hollywood arches but they're still arches this here is $33 and they have this hat which I do not love it looks like a sticker they just put right on the front there but if you're interested in this hat with Garaka on it this is $30 around the corner they have this little boo sort of pumpkin Halloweeny design it's got Major Sweet's hat right there this one here is also $33 they have the corresponding Lil Boo coaster here for $12 with Halloween Horror Nights on the back. And they have this little ornament. Also got the Halloween Horror Nights logo on the back. $20. They still have these Where Horror Lives shirt. They have the black variant and the orange variant. Both of them are $33. The Where Horror Lives collection is all still here. They still have tumblers here. This one's on sale here for $27.99. They have this fun little trucker hat here. Snapback hat. This here is $30. And they also have this really cool blacklight reactive shirt. No two shirts are alike. It's one of those really thin material cool design here this is $35 they got some fun buttons with the sort of atomic goth punk theme as they describe it these are here for $11 they have this acrylic sign here for 25 oops upside down $25 and here we have a sticker sheet with that same vibe. This here is $12. Another minor construction update, not a scare zone update, but we have a big truss in front of this bar here. This is typically a bar location. This kind of looks like the truss that had the Peacock Halloween Horror Bar sign, so maybe we'll see Peacock moved over to the Battery Park area. I honestly thought this would be where they would put it in the first place. There's enough room here for a big bar, and then you can put those meeting greets on the lower level there on the water. But even if this isn't a Peacock Bar, there will be some sort of bar, some sort of food booth here. Last year, they had the uh, Mel's die-in, and well, with Mel's being reopened, I'm guessing this is just gonna go back to being a full-fledged bar. And on the opposite side of the bar here, we have more trusses lining the tables, lining the water, more lighting I'm expecting to go here. Really cool, like I said, maybe they use the lower level for some extra seating, extra standing room, or characters, whatever. But either way, we have some truss work initial truss work, initial lighting, getting ready to go over here in this area along the water. And something I do want to talk about while I'm here, of course, I showed off some of the Halloween Horror Nights merch, and it doesn't seem to be selling. Most of the sizes are still available, and they even have merch in other places of the park. I'm in the front store, in the Mummy gift shop already. So this is really interesting. I don't know what this means for Horror Nights merch. How much of this preview merch is going to bleed into the event itself? Typically, this is just preview merch and sells out pretty quick uh, before the event really gets started. And then we have our main event merch. But considering we have most if not all sizes available on all the shirts still some of the accessories this stuff's still going to be available so if you're coming to the park anytime in the near future they do have preview merch available maybe even into the event we will see some of this preview merch again bleed into the main event merch but something i did want to talk about something quite interesting now while most of the construction updates i've been talking about have been trust works and initial lighting we actually have dropped today brand new props our first scare zone props in the central park location this scare zone seems to be the one that's being built out first which is very similar to what we saw last year with jungle of doom and here we have some crash boat props lots of things for people to stand on hide in looks again very aesthetically similar to what we saw in jungle of doom and of course we have that swamp of the undead scare zone i talked about earlier in the video and my prediction is it's going to go in this zone based on the props we're seeing and some of the lighting we're also seeing we have high lighting we have low lighting maybe to project some sort of swamp water going along the ground so we're kind of wading through the water as we're going through the scare zone first props of the season it's really exciting to see these scare zones begin to come to life and if we get anything as visually beautiful as jungle of doom we're in for a treat this year when it comes to central park also in addition to the central park scare zone we have some trust work here for whatever bar or food booth we're gonna see over here. Usually we would see a Dia de los Muertos bar. For the past two years, we've seen that. Maybe this ties into this scare zone here in Central Park. It would be kind of cool if we did get the swamp scare zone and got some New Orleans Cajun food to go with it, but you know, we can dream. Just for an example, some of the lighting, we have a regular sort of covered truss with lighting up at the top, what you would normally see, and then we have some lighting here behind the fence covered up by this sort of themed 
fence. So I imagine these fences are going to be lining the scare zone. Where all, wherever these little lights are, you can see some more down there. Wherever these lights are, that are going to be projecting through the fences into sort of the main street of the scare zone. So just a little bit of an example for you when I talk about low lighting, that's what we're talking about. All right, not much going on outside of Central Park and World Expo and sort of the, you know DreamWorks Land area, except for some progress on the newly announced Nightmare Fuel Nocturnal Circus. I talked about it a little bit at the beginning of this video, but as you can see, there are lights up there at the top. This will be our sort of sign. And then there's a little truss over this way, which will have our show times and everything like that. So very soon we'll have some house portals on this side right here in this little gate, but we're not there quite yet. We're just right here at Nightmare Fuel Nocturnal Circus coming this year for our uh, one and only show. And moving on from Nightmare Fuel in this little area, we have the Amity bathrooms. There's there's London and Diagon Alley. We have this little plaza here, which they haven't done much with in the past year. Two years ago, they had some food booths here, but right now we can see a lighting truss right here. Um, if nothing else, they're gonna be projecting some stuff on the ground like they did last year. They had Oddfellow symbol uh, projected onto the ground here. So maybe we'll get a food booth here, maybe we won't. Uh, maybe we'll get a bar, but at the very least we have some lights right here. All right, if you were following my construction update videos last year and you saw me stand in this spot, it was normally to talk about the Death Eaters. And it looks like the Death Eaters could be coming back this year for Halloween Horn Nights. We have a little stage that has appeared in Diagon Alley that resembles the one they had last year. I had a good amount of fun with them when they were here last year at the event, so I'm not surprised to see them come back in some fashion. Pretty much exactly the same as last year, I'm guessing, so we're gonna see some more props sprinkled in, but we just got the debut of Death Eater props in Diagon Alley. I was curious to see if they would bring them back, and it looks like they are coming back. So just a little Death Eater update. No, not officially announced yet, but my guess is they're gonna bring them back for Halloween Horn Nights this year. All right, moving on from Diagon Alley in London, we can see we have a little cage here with a small stage, a little step and repeat here. And this was here last year, had a big Halloween Hornets photo op for the Peacock Halloween Horror Bar. But yeah, it's very exciting. We're seeing something going on here. I don't remember if there was a stage or step and repeat or whatever you call one of these here last year. Um, I thought it was on the ground, uh, but I could be wrong. Maybe they're gonna put a character here. They had two of them, so maybe they're gonna put another one in this spot and then keep this one here. Um, but very interesting as we move uh, in to San Francisco, we have quite a bit of construction. Okay, I had to park it over here by Richter's to talk about all these San Fran updates. Other than Central Park, I think San Francisco has the most stuff going on. We have lighting, we have speed, we have trusses everywhere and of course the most noticeable piece is this big box that's here right in the middle no clue what this is it looks like we could be going into a structure a lot like what we did with scarecrow back in 2022 going into the barn could be going into a structure within this scare zone this is a huge box here but i worry because san francisco is one of those scare zones that bottlenecks pretty bad it gets really cramped really tight so i'm curious to see if they're gonna try to alleviate that this year expecting to see stuff going on in the very very near future also going for my phone something i forgot to talk about over by richter's is this tower with sort of a platform on top it's got some railings there and what looks to be a covered set of stairs so maybe we'll see someone up there at the top guiding whatever's going on in this scare zone we're not sure but I'm very curious to see just one of these maybe we'll get more maybe this is it but right now this is what we got so the main thing happening in New York when it comes to the New York scare zone is all of this lighting that has appeared across all the buildings. Every single building has these big impressive lighting fixtures installed on them. We have wires connecting some of them. I'm showing some sort of zoomed in footage, pardon the zoom, but yeah, we do really have lighting here. Not too much in terms of truss work or props, nothing quite yet, but lighting is always good to see. It means progress is happening. I'm sure in the coming weeks, we'll see some props, some stuff at least, kind of indicating what we're gonna see here. And really the only truss work we have here in New York is here by the New York Public Library. Now here are entrances to normally two houses, one on the left, one on the right, and we have some trusses with some lights looking to project something on the New York Public Library, typically something HHN 33, some cool design. I have the one from last year on the screen right now. Uh, typically you see something like that projected on the library as you walk back to whatever two houses are back here in the sound stages you can see a little truss over on the side i don't want to go too far because that becomes an employee backstage area but um yeah we have two trusses here projecting something over here and we could see maybe uh, some stanchions come here very soon to set up whatever houses are back here all right and that about wraps things up as far as one night's updates go a lot of stuff to talk about. All scare zones have some stuff happening, barring the front. Props in Central Park, the big box in San Francisco, curious what that is, and some new scare zones and entertainment announced for the event this year. Let me know in the comments below what excites you most that you saw in this video. Is it the potential swamp of the undead scare zone in Central Park? Is it the return of nightmare fuel? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. If you like videos like this and want to see more of them, be sure to let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Really lets me know, again, you like videos like these, you want me to make more. I got to drive 
at home and edit this video for y'all. Try to get it out as soon as possible. So I'm gonna call it. But I of course wanna thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, stay spooky and take care everybody.